In the first video of this series, we actually looked at how to set up our backdrops, how to set up an instruction backdrop. That one was there. I've added a few extra instructions to the original one. And then how to set up our maze, draw our maze line, stick the end in. So now we know what the first thing we need to do is add a sprite. That's the image that we can do things with, move around, interact with what's in the maze. So we click on that and we chose the bananas. Now we can move the bananas to wherever we want, but this bananas, these bananas are way too big to get through all the holes here. So I'm going to change the size to 30. Just drag the bananas down the bottom there, all ready to go, and now I can start. Now we need to start at the backdrop, so click on the backdrops again. Um, and what we want to do is set up the start of the game. So the first thing we do is when anyone starts a game in Scratch is click on the green flag or the go flag. So we're looking for an event, which is here. Now, uh, Scratch is what's called an event-driven language. In other words, it waits to event and have for an event to occur. Then it looks down the list of all the events that you've listed. And if it's there, it follows the instruction for that event. So when it's clicked, we want to change the look. We want to switch the backdrop to instructions. And that will go to our instruction. Now, the next thing we need to do is to start the, game, the actual maze game. To do that, we need to program the sprite. A moment ago, we were programming for the backdrops. Now we're programming for the sprite. So we're looking for an event. When this sprite is clicked, in other words, when we click the banana, what do we want? Well, we want a broadcast to go out and a message to be sent out. What's it gonna say? New message, it's gonna say, Start game. Okay. So there's our start game message. And then what we need to do is go back to the backdrops and go to when I receive start game. In other words, when I hear that message, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to switch the backdrop to level one. That's where the maze is. Okay. So now we've set up that part of the game. We need to work on how to move the bananas. So let's click our bananas. We've got this one started that actually starts the game. Now we need to how to move. So it's going to be an event that gets that going. And it's going to be the event here. When space key is pressed, but we don't want the space key. So we look down our list and our up arrow because we want the arrow keys. Okay, when we click up arrow, what we want it to do? Well, the first thing we want it to do is to face in a particular direction. So if I set to, where are we? Point in direction. Now, if we click on 90, the up arrow, we actually want it to be facing up because that's the way it's moving. And that's at a zero or zero degrees, if you like. And then we need to make sure that it's moving, but not going through the red walls. So how do we do that? Well, we look at a control called an if then else. In other words, we're going to be saying, if it hits this red line, do an instruction. But if it hasn't hit the red line, then do something else. That's all we're saying here. So how do we work this out? We go to sensing and we put in touching color. So if it's touching the red color, that, that's not red, that's green. So we click on that and we have to match the color exactly. So we go to the dropper here and then we move across and you'll notice when I touch that line, it goes dark red. Click, now that's matched it. So if it has touched that line, I want it to move backward from the line. So I want it to make 10, what's called negative 10 steps. In other words, I'm moving 
backwards 10 steps. If it hasn't touched the line, then I want to move forward five steps. Now we can do this for each arrow and there's a cheats way of doing this, which is always the best way. Um, and what we can do here is once we've done this, we go to duplicate. Yep, just accidentally moved that one. But this time, down arrow. Now the only other thing we have to change here is the direction. Because it's down arrow, we want to be facing down, that's 180 degrees. Okay, duplicate. And you guessed it, right arrow. The only thing we need to change is direction. It's pointing right, which is 90 degrees. One more, left arrow. Duplicate. left arrow the only thing we have to change is the direction because you want to point it left and that will be negative 90 degrees because it's gone in the other direction all right so now we've set up our maze and how to move our bananas around the maze